Okay, let's get started. Thanks uh, for joining my webinar today, everybody. My name is Jonathan McDonald. I'm a solutions engineer with the Information Lab. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about Snowflake's time travel feature, uh, which is one of the rather unique features that you get on the Snowflake data cloud platform. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Snowflake, uh, Snowflake is a cloud-based uh, serverless data warehouse um, which offers you um, a number of features which uh, take advantage of um, the fact that it is cloud-based, um, uh, specifically around uh, the ability to separate storage and compute um, and, uh, and also um, uh, you can pay, uh, pay as a user. So um, you only pay for Snowflake when uh, you're doing when you're working on Snowflake. Um, otherwise, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, so it's a pretty cool platform. Um, the Information Lab is a Snowflake partner. Um, but I wanted to drill down into one specific feature, which is time travel. And I'm going to show you three hands-on uh, practical uses for time travel, um, which are going to make your life easier as an analyst um, or as a DBA um, or as someone who's just trying to work with your data. So let's dive straight in. Um, time travel is uh, in Snowflake gives you the ability to query um, or restore objects in your data warehouse um, at a certain point in time of the past. So um, you uh, you might have a scenario where you dropped a table by accident. Time travel can help you undrop that table. Um, there's a few different ways that you can use this um, to uh, rectify issues. Um, to restore objects or to even just perform some, some time series comparisons. Um, the way that you use time travel is fairly simple. Um, you can write it as a SQL query. Uh, so let's have a look at an example query here. I'll just dive into the Snowflake console. Um, you can see I'm logged in with my user account. And I am going to uh, accidentally drop a database till UK demos. And if I run that, uh, you can see my till UK demos. If I refresh, that, data, that database is gone, the whole database. Whoops. Um, but not to worry, we can just use undrop. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to run this command again, and it undrops the database. And we have our schemas and our tables inside our schemas all restored. Um, so that's a great get out of jail free card um, that you can use to undrop things. Uh, the undrop feature is available for as long as you uh, your time travel retention period is set to. Um, so when I say time travel retention period, uh, this varies depending on firstly, the type of Snowflake edition that you're using. And secondly, uh, on the, uh, this, the parameter um, in your account and what type, what your time travel retention period is set to in the number of days. So if we have a look at the first thing, uh, the addition, and I'm just going to go to the pricing page of Snowflake's website. Um, and we just have a look at the different editions. So these are the editions here. You get standard, enterprise, business critical, and virtual private Snowflake. So you'll notice here on the standard edition, you have one day of time travel. On the enterprise editions and above, you can get up to 90 days of time travel. Um, so this is a great example um, when you might want to choose the enterprise edition uh, if you are an organization looking to deploy in, uh, in the, uh, deploy your data warehouse in the cloud and you want all of the full features um, that time travel affords you. <clears throat> So that's, um, that's the one factor that determines how long your retention period is. Um, the other factor is what this parameter data retention time in days is set to on your account. And actually, it's not just the account where you can set this. You can set this at the, the database level or even the individual table level. So let's have a look at that. I'm going to switch to use my uh, account admin role uh, because if I need to set, change a, a setting at the account level, you do need to be an account admin. Um, so I'm switched to, to using that role now. You can see that in my context. Uh, and now I'm going to show the parameters for the account. And you can see here I've got a data retention time in days, and that value is currently set to one. 
um, <clears throat> I can alter that by changing this value, alter account set data retention time and days equals two. And if I run this again, we should see that that's now set to two. Okay. Um, now, I don't actually want to set this globally because one thing you have to consider with, uh, with time travel is uh, your data storage will increase. Uh, so for as long as your, your data retention period is set to, uh, Snowflake is recording all changes and updates to all of your tables and databases, um, which can greatly increase your, your data storage costs, especially if you've got tables that are, um, that are changing frequently. Uh, large tables changing frequently can boost that right up. So, um, so you may, may want to consider whether you set it at the account level um, or whether you just set it on a, sp a specific database or a table. So in my example, I'm going to change my time travel retention period on the database till the UK demos. And I'm going to set that to 30 days. And we should see now I've got... Uh, There we go. And then if you run this again, we can see that we've got 30 days worth of time travel starting today. Okay, so that's one great example of, uh, of time travel, drop and undrop. I'm gonna move on to another example where you can use time travel to fix um, certain dimensions or values in a, in a table that um, you might've updated and it's now broken. Uh, this is, uh, a really, um, uh, you know, typical scenario when you've got a table and it's uh, it's been updated with some data, which has broken everything, and that is a DBA's worst nightmare. It usually takes a long time to um, uh, a long time to to rectify with quite a lot of manual selects and updates, um, iterating over and over until you you get back to the previous state. Um, now we can use time travel to to actually fix any problems like this really quickly. And uh, you can even do it selectively on just a particular subset of broken records. Um, so the example um, I've made here is to create a temporary table. Um, and uh, the temporary table uh, is created from a select statement where you query your broken table at a timestamp before everything went wrong. Uh, and you can filter that to just where uh, a column is um, equal to you know, the particular damaged records of values. Um, so you, you're just querying a subset of your table, uh, the subset of data that is broken, and you're, you're putting that data into uh, a temporary table from, uh, you know, from, from the original values. Um, you can then update those broken records in your actual table with the subset from the above. So you can delete from table where the, uh, the column uh, contains the damaged records, and then you can insert back into the table from the temporary table above. So that's a great, neat, quick way to, uh, to get back to a previous state where you've got some portions of your data in a table which were updated and broken uh, are now fixed. Okay, look. Uh, and then the third example I was going to go through was um, just a really handy way to make time series comparisons easy. So uh, if you've ever had a use case where you needed to compare months to date figures uh, with the same period or the previous month to date um, on a live table, this is uh, this is weirdly quite difficult. Um, you know, historically databases would have um, history tables or audit tables so that you could track what, uh, what's been changed on uh, a live transactional table. Um, a classic example of this is something like um, account balances in a bank. Uh, you have a table which shows all of the, the customer's account balances and that's constantly changing. And you need to, you know, if you need to do some analysis on how those balances have uh, changed over time, you've got to do some pretty detailed work to um, create a history table that tracks the changes over time. <clears throat> uh, now you can use time travel, uh, really easy. Again, you get up to 90 days worth of retention history. 
So let's have a look at how this might work. Uh, so I'm going to switch and just make sure I'm using the correct database and the correct schema. So we can now see that I'm back on my sysadmin role context um, uh, using this warehouse. I'm in this database and I'm using this schema. Um, I'm going to quickly jump into Ultrix and run a workflow that grabs share prices from an API and puts them into these tables. And this will just take a couple of seconds to run. It's, it's grabbing the FTSE 100 share prices as they stand currently. And that's done. All right, so back into the Snowflake console. Let's have some uh, a quick look at the, uh, the share price data in this table in Snowflake that I've got called FTSE 100 live share prices. And if I run this query now, I should see we've got uh, <clears throat> all of the FTSE 100 companies and the share prices in descending order. Now let's have a look and see what the share prices looked like one hour ago. Uh, so you can see here, I've got the exact same select statement, uh, but in this example, I've added an offset. So uh, the, the, the notation for time travel when you're doing it this way is to add the offset uh, or the timestamp after the from. So I've got select company name, uh, select the share price from this table at uh, an offset. So the offset in this case is giving me the table as it's still 3,600 3, seconds ago. So one hour ago. Um, and if I run this now, let's just have a quick look, little eyeballs, Spirax, Arco Engineering, share price 14155, 14165. Okay, so this is giving me data from an hour ago, uh, telling me what the share price was back then. Now, uh, that's great, you know, I could leave it there. Um, something that you can, you specify in here, if you don't want to specify an offset, you can specify a specific timestamp. Uh, so the notation for that is um, uh, you would just do at timestamp, or uh, alternatively, you can specify a query ID. So an identifier for a statement. So let's say you wanted to query a table prior to a particular um update action uh, was executed you can um you can specify that query id of that update action and it will make bring back the table as it stood before that query occurred all right um now i actually want to you know do some analysis on this i want to compare the differences between the current share price and the share price as it stood one hour ago and what I'm going to do to, um, to do that analysis is I'm going to create just a temporary table. So temp tables in Snowflake just last for the current user session only. So as soon as I log out of my console, uh, this temp table disappears. Um, so my temp table is basically just a select statement that uh, grabs the current share price. It grabs the old share price. Um, and it does some calculation on the difference. And that's coming from uh, the current table and again, the same table, but at an offset of one hour ago. Uh, and we're joining these two as well. So if I run this now, right, you can see my table was created. And if I just preview the data in here, I can see that uh, Rio Tinto is one of our biggest movers uh, in the last hour. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I can see Flutter Entertainment, one of the biggest losers in the last hour. So that's that's really handy. It's using time travel for uh, for for doing actual uh, doing actual analysis on your data. Um, those are the three cool use cases that uh, I wanted to show you in time travel today. I hope you found that useful. Um, if you have any more um, inf uh, questions or queries about using Snowflake or using time travel uh, uh, in any sense, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm going to pop my email address 
in the console here. Uh, that's me, Jonathan McDonald of JMAC. Um, and uh, feel free to reach out if you've got any questions. Um, but thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much for, for listening today. Just a quick session on time travel in Snowflake. <laughs>